Hello everyone, I'm Mark. And I'm Lenise. And you're watching another episode of Living Well, You in a Basin, where success is defined by you. This week we had a lot of fun with our show on Beyond the Couch. We were able to meet up with some people who did a local race here in town and focus on some of those local races and what a fun experience that was. Well, this is their first time, right? It was. It oh, was a what lot an of fun. experience. And then on Dish by Dish, I had Wendy Hadlock join me in the kitchen and she was able to show us a recipe using a lot of different garden vegetables. Mark knows I'm not much for canning and you get well, a lot of... Everyone brings the zucchini over to your house, so what do you do with it? Yeah. Wendy so... showed us a great example there. And it was delicious. Yeah, and I got to go up to Dry Fork Canyon to see the fall leaves changing and talk to a local man. He changed his life through exercise and eating well. That was an incredible story. Well, so. I'm excited. Let's get after it, Lenace. All right, let's do it. Living Well, You Into Basin, presented by Ashley Regional Medical Center. Also made possible by Anna Darko and You Into Recreation District. Living Well, Beyond the Couch. I absolutely love to race and have for years. But my problem has always been that all the races have always been in the Wasatch Front. That's not the issue anymore. As you can see, almost every week here in Vernal now, there is a race happening. And it's so fun that so many community members get to come out and enjoy these races. Today, I'm going to catch up with two local community members that did their first 5K race, and I'm so excited to talk to them. So let's go and see what they have to say about their first 5K. I'm here with Christy and Amy. They just completed their first 5K race, so good job, you guys. Um, Christy, let's start with you. You had never ran before this race, is that correct? Yes, we, I have been interested in starting running, and a lot of my friends do it, and people that live in my neighborhood, and I've just never taken the time to do it, and I just decided that, my husband and I decided we saw the moonshine 5K coming up, and we decided it was time to start, so about a week and a half before, we started running and training, and and did it. Half. That's, so. that's not very much time, I'll have you know. She's kind of an exception to the rule. Well, that's great. And Amy, you've been, how long have you been running? Well, I started running originally about a year and a half ago. Just my sole purpose was to start losing weight. That was okay. my main thing. I never had ran competitively until the, the moonshine race. So that was my first So that was your race. first 5K? Mm -hmm. Yes. And how did it, how did it feel? I mean, it was great accomplishment yeah, I was real I loved it it was a lot of fun I was really proud that I actually accomplished something and it was nice to see my work kind of pay off great well, let me ask you you mentioned you've been running for about a year now mm -hmm. um, what was the difference between running a race as opposed to just running in the park why a race why why sign up for a race well I think that um, just having something to look forward to and just kind of setting a goal for myself because if I didn't have a goal it was easier to slack off and kind sure. of quit and it helped me with my personal goals as far as maybe weight loss and getting in shape and it had something to kind of set my sights on. That's great and Christy I know you have three kids, four, four. kids, yep. small kids. Yep. How did the training, I mean you said you only only went for a week and a half but how was that training? Was it difficult or? Well um, my husband and I decided that we were going to do it together. Okay. That would just be Switch a fun off. thing for us to do well together. Oh you ran together. So actually okay. we would just put our kids in bed and at night we would go run around just in our neighborhood on the block around our neighborhood and and it was a lot of fun to, for us to do that together and we continued to do that together and so Great. it's fun for us to do something. Well, and how fun to be able to do it with your spouse. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just, mm -hmm. that's the great thing I think yeah. about running and these races, get to come together as a community and, yeah. and really get to know other people and, yeah. and do it with them. Yeah. So how did it feel to, to cross that finish line? It, it felt really good. When we run, I don't keep up as well with my husband, and so he just kind of took off. And But when I crossed that line and he was there waiting for me, and it was awesome. It was cool to set a goal and and complete that goal and another thing when I'm running it's I did it first just to kind of get my endurance up and be a little have a little more of a healthy lifestyle because I don't exercise a lot so that was my first goal but it's amazing as I've started running it's it's really a good mental outlet sure I guess that's yeah. how you could put it, a mental outlet because having four small children and keeping up with them and church callings and my preschool and all the things that I do in my life I don't have a lot of quiet time in my life yeah. and so that's been one huge thing is I can get out there and run and I can just think and clear my thoughts and it gives me time to myself because I don't have much time to myself so that's been a huge benefit of it. Oh that's great that's really great. Uh, Amy what would you say to anybody out there that uh, 
is maybe thinking, I know a lot of people, they're intimidated. They don't, they don't know where to begin with running. What would you say to them? Well, I would say you'll never know until you start. When I first started running, it was all I could do to jog for one minute, 60 seconds. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I was amazed at over the weeks and months as I kept going how much better I got. And it was it was fun to run the race and it was also as I when I finished I had hoped to get a better time so it just gave me more motivation to get back out there, work harder, push myself harder, keep going and it's just it's good to have something to feel good about myself for accomplishing. Sure. And I would say if I can do it, I guarantee anyone can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well that's great. Well, hopefully anyone that's watching out there, I'm going to put a challenge out and I'm going to challenge you to get off the couch. Start somewhere, like Amy said. In the beginning, all she could do is 60 seconds. If that's all you can do, the next time it might be two minutes. The next time it might be five. Get out there. There's so many races. Go do it. And I promise you will better your life for it. Thanks so much for being here Thanks, with us Lenise. today. I appreciate it. Living well, dish by dish. I'm here today with Wendy, and she's here to show us one of her famous garden recipes with vegetables that she uses straight from her garden. Uh, Wendy, what's the name of this recipe? It has a long name. It's PDQ for short, but the entire name is PDQ Pasta Primavera Pepperoni. Great. Pepperoni Pasta Primavera. Sounds good. So well, we tell us PDQ. about it. What? It has lots of vegetables in it that can be grown in your garden. Um, Broccoli is the only thing that I don't grow in my garden, but it has uh, a good portion of broccoli. In fact, let's just pour it in here. I like to use about four cups of broccoli. Okay. And then some zucchini squash. We've got it fixed up and some yellow squash, both of those. And I just usually add enough chopped vegetables till I fill this just heaping full. Okay, so you, want, you said about four cups, that's what it is. Four cups of broccoli okay. and then the oh, rest of, broccoli. of these kinds of vegetables. Okay. Um, and you, if you like more vegetables, you could use more, certainly. Okay. And then I'll use just a little bit of red pepper, the sweet And red this pepper. is from your garden as well? You yes, grow the, yeah, the bell we grow the red well. pepper. Actually, we'll probably not fit that in there now, so we'll just pour it in. When okay. We, but it does have the red pepper and okay. those vegetables. And these will be cooked right in with the pasta. We've already started some pasta back here. And as the pasta gets about um, three or four minutes away from being done, we'll throw the vegetables in with the pasta. Okay. And let, it, let them cook together. So I'll go ahead and add these vegetables right now to the pasta because it's been cooking for about three minutes or four minutes by now. So I'm going to go ahead and add these okay. while you continue with your recipe. All right. While the vegetables are cooking in with the pasta, and we might want to throw a little salt in with that, um, too. I usually make up the sauce that goes on the, the pasta primavera. The recipe calls for cream. I use some half and half and um, about a cup and a half depending on how many vegetables you use. If you use a little extra vegetables you'll want to use that full cup and a half. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, that one can be a little hard to see at times, can right it? Right about yep, there. That's good. About a cup and a half of the cream or the half and half. Then I add about a cup of um, grated cheese, grated Parmesan cheese, or you can use the finely shredded. Either one works well. Okay. This does kind of dissolve and melt in a little better, but okay. both have a nice flavor. Okay, and, and are you fact, needing a... We'll need a, a cup, a cup. of that. that. We'll any. measure that. And I throw in about a half a cup of green onions. We can just go right in there. Here's your cup for your... I'm going to go ahead and add that for you. Sure. Which one do you want to use? You I said. think we'll use that. Okay. Let's go ahead or you and add could it. use a little of each. Put that in. All right. So this is the sauce that will go on our pasta when, right. it's, when it's cooked. And we're going to put in a little basil. Now, I didn't have any fresh basil, although it is fun to grow. And we'll put a couple of teaspoons of that basil or extra in there. And it calls for about a half a teaspoon of, of pepper. Ah, looks good. Well, and then we use some uh, pepperonis. Used to buy, before the mini pepperonis came out, just the pepperonis and yeah, cut them in half. Yeah, I was going to say, I've never seen the mini before. That's kind of fun. Yeah, so, so. The, the minis work nice. It makes it even faster. But you can use the regular and just maybe cut them in half. I did see these that made with um, turkey also. Oh, you could turkey. try it. And so that would pepperonis. be a little less yeah. fattening. But yeah. ah, I'm not worried about that today. pasta, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> So anyway, that'll go in with our vegetables when okay. 
when they're finished. Looks good. So, so you don't you don't mix it around or you anything? You can. Okay. Let's I'm going to go ahead and mix it. While you check those vegetables, I'll go ahead and mix this up. Okay. Looks like our vegetables are done. Looks so good. we're gonna go ahead and pull, pour these into the bowl. You see enough? We've mixed our cream sauce mixture. We're gonna pour that on, stir it in. I'll start mixing up for yep. you. Just toss that around. In fact, I think we could even add a little extra cream. Let me just grab that. Sorry that one. You can just judge. Mm -hmm. Oh, it smells fantastic. Really, yeah. really does. It's. I'm not tossing too well here, am I? Maybe you ought to toss. Oh, yeah, I think you're, you're the doing queen great. Of the kitchen, so. <laughs> I'm not the queen of the kitchen, but we'll just mix those vegetables. So you've got your your pasta, and then all you need is a, some bread or something like that to throw with it, and you've got a perfect dinner for the night. Great. And you, you brought some bread. I Tell us about this. I found some uh, bread at the farmer's market this Saturday. This is a dill cheese cottage cheese, a dill cottage cheese bread that, that they had at the farmer's market. It's a nice artesian bread and it goes nicely with a vinaigrette a dipping sauce, put a little in a dish. Oh yeah. Vinaigrette and a little, little oil. Oil with it. And, and, um, and voila, there's dinner. There's your dinner. It's a fantastic. Dipping sauce in that. Just pour it. I don't know if you want to pour it into a. Yeah, let's let's pour it in this dish, and I don't know that the whole thing will fit. It looks like it's made quite a bit, and I'm spilling everywhere, but that's okay. okay. If you cooked your kitchen, if you cooked and your kitchen was clean after, I don't buy it. So, all right, Wendy, looks fantastic. You Thank go. you so much for coming on our show today. It's my pleasure. Uh, if you want to get her recipe, you can go to www .channel VTV Channel 6 and click on Living Well and her recipe will be there for us. So thanks again for showing. And now for Anna Darko's health and safety tip. Oatmeal and apple barley are some examples of foods high in fiber. It does not only lower your cholesterol naturally, but high fiber foods are also good antioxidants. Living Well, your way. What a beautiful fall day up here oh, yeah. at Dry Fork Canyon, isn't it's, it? It's nice. Yeah. Oh man, it's I love nice. to come to the canyon. The air is cool. Hello everybody. With me is Ed Souders. We're up in the beautiful Dry Fork Canyon with the fall leaves changing all around us. And I brought Ed on the show because his story is an inspiration to me and it can be to you once you hear his story. Ed started you know, years ago with a backhoe business and changed that into a cash services and a pawn shop. And throughout his life, his age went on and eating habits changed. He went from, you know, a, a relatively active guy that swam and, uh, you know, did other things to a guy that was stuck in, a, in a, a recliner chair, you know, and could only walk maybe 10 feet at a time and weighed over 400 pounds. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and, and as Ed told me the story, he said, it got to the point where I was in so much physical pain because of my weight that I didn't sleep for three weeks and really my life was physically over. So what changed, Ed? What, what, what was the key? What happened? What made you want to change from that person to the 220 pound guy you are right now? No pain, no change. You know, I was tired of the pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took several years, but it was a process. I didn't change along the way. I, uh, I went from working every day out in the field with my guys, hard physical labor, running equipment, to sitting behind the desk and working on uh, drawings, bids, and stuff like that, yeah. and I didn't change my eating habits. So the eating habits didn't change, but the physical labor went from the, the physical labor to a desk guy. Yes, sir. Those desk jockeys, you get yeah. in trouble. So you tell me you got up over 400 pounds. I did. Okay, so I this is a family show, but I want you to show the audience your belt here, because this is pretty amazing. This is not the original belt, as, as I understand. No. The original belt was? About three inches longer. Three inches longer, and you've kept it as a memento to your health. And, and what you've accomplished, what was the key for you? I mean, you got over 400 pounds, 60 years old, dude. That's not, uh, the, 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 the time is short when you're at that yeah. size. One of the big factors that really helped me was the fact that uh, my religion has uh, a health code in it. And uh, I realized that I needed to live by it. 
and that was a big factor. So yeah, you know, you're talking about your religion has a health code, and we hear about the food pyramid, we hear, there's all sorts of common sense things that say this is how you should live, and you know, your religion has that, and, and all of us have heard it from the grade school level up. So what was it, what part of that, what, what did you latch on to that helped you? Moderation in all things. Okay. And uh, as I got into this, uh, I realized that I wanted to take it a little bit farther. And uh, I used to be a really big meat eater, and uh, especially red meat. And uh, I have red meat now uh, maybe three or four times a year. On my birthday, uh, we barbecue, have a picnic, stuff like that. I, I don't do it as a regular diet anymore. Right, so you're, you're talking about eating, but that obviously you had to change your diet. There had been something else that you changed too. What physical activity did you do? You're 65 now, you look great. Thank I you. mean, we were jumping off of rocks over here. I don't know 50 year olds that can do that sometimes. So, what, what physical activity was it that you did? I uh, first started in the pool walking back and forth sideways about uh, chest height. And once I lost about 28 pounds, my feet quit hurting. And I, I shuffled, my feet just killed me. And once I got to that point, I just started walking. I started walking up Yellow Hill because I lived right down the street from there. It was very convenient. When I had time, I would, uh, you know, run up to Yellow Hill and walk up, walk around the subdivision and back down. And then from there, I started U Hill. U Hill. So you were walking. You yeah. set a goal. The goal was to go across the UN, is on the UN Trail. Uh, you started 10 feet at a time in a pool. Tell me about your trip in the UN. I uh, did some overnighters uh, with my kids and stuff, um, uh, three days, two days like that, and as I kept losing weight, and then I kept uh, exercising and getting myself in shape for the uh, 100 miler that I went with a couple of National Guard guys out of the uh, Twilla area. And um, the gentleman usually, he does this every year, it takes him 10 days. We did it in seven and a half days. We, by the third day, we were a day ahead of schedule, so we pushed ourselves. And I, I was 60 years old when I did uh, from Spirit Lake, Mirror Lake to Spirit Lake in seven and a half days. Seven and a half days, how many miles? Uh, a little under 100 to Spirit Lake. 100, 100 miles. Now, I want you to think about this. 400 pounds to a slim and trim 220 right now? Yeah. Basically half his body weight. Would you say walking's free, right? Yeah. Uh, you can eat healthy, it's common sense things. And at 65, Ed Souders is an inspiration to all of us. Uh, I, I, think, I think it's great what you've done. Good to call you a friend, and great, great, great to have you as a member of our community. Living well in the Uinta Basin, it doesn't take going to the gym, it's just doing it your way. Again, we wanna thank those that were a part of our show today. We have had so much fun filming this show, but we want to hear from you guys. What is it that gets you beyond the couch? What are some of your favorite dishes to make? And what is it that is just your way? We want to thank our sponsors that help us put on this show. We've had so much fun. I, I've enjoyed this episode. If you want to catch this episode or any future episodes, go to vtvchannel6.com. Until next time, live well, Uina Basin. See you next time.